Well, the summer blockbuster season's finally upon us, which means a whole bunch of new superhero movies in theaters. Now, normally I'd do a superhero movie from Turkey, but I've already done the Turkish versions of Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, and Captain America. And I'm pretty sure there isn't a Turkish Suicide Squad movie. At least not one that I'm aware of. So instead, I'm going to do a superhero movie from somewhere else. And besides, this is my 75th episode, and a sort of special anniversary like that deserves a sort of special movie. Ladies and gentlemen, prepare yourselves for Inframan. <laughs> Inframan is a 1975 Hong Kong superhero, kung fu, monster, sci-fi, whatever the fuck movie that's also known as the Super Inframan and Chinese Superman. Uh, yeah, I've seen other countries' knockoffs of Superman, and you ain't one of them. Speaking of knockoffs, the movie was made by Shaw Brothers Studio, who also made Mighty Peking Man. Hey, just so long as it's not made by the same people as Queen Kong, I'm okay with that. I don't know what these symbols in the opening credits mean, but I'm pretty sure I shot them in Space Invaders. It's also not a good sign that the fight choreography was apparently done by a Chia pet. I appreciate the psychedelic effects though. This is your brain on the drugs you should be on when watching this movie. So anyway, the movie begins with a busload of school children getting attacked by a weird pterodactyl monster which disappears and causes an earthquake? Alright, so there's our opening scene. <laughs> The hell? Did the bus crashing cause a city to explode? Cause that's what the editing makes it seem like. Slow down, movie, we're only a few minutes in. I sure hope these reporters can get this guy to tell us what the hell is going on. Professor, could these catastrophes mean the end of the world is coming? I haven't determined. There's no explanation at all. What kind of monsters are they? Mmm, so rabble, rabble, rabble. Gotcha. Meanwhile, on the set of every futuristic 70s control room ever, it looks like these guys have got their own problems. The communication system has broken down. Well, maybe instead of relying on cubic zirconias for communication, you should consider just getting a phone. The professor here is a little late. He had to go back and grab his microwavable lab coat. Hopefully one of those buttons can tell him what the plot is. There's another report. It says Mount Devil has erupted. That volcano has been dead for a thousand years. Why should it erupt now? There's only one logical explanation. Um, space aliens or something? Unfortunately, they're not able to think of an explanation since this movie doesn't give them time to think. How far in are we now? This movie does not fuck around. Oh hey, that's what's causing the volcano to explode. Someone put a He-Man playset underneath it. And it turns out the one responsible for all this is... Asian Madonna Evil Lynn? Man, I am not a fan of Rita Repulsa's design in the new Power Rangers movie. Seriously though, who is this? Greetings to you Earthlings. I am Princess Dragon Mom. Huh? Uh, say that again? Princess Dragon Mom. Princess Dragon Mom. The villain of this movie is called Princess Dragon Mom. You know, that is so stupid it's almost genius. I mean, what other names did they think of before they settled on that one? Duchess Rainbow Dingleberry? Either surrender to me or I'll destroy all humans. I've spoken. It's all the warning you're going to get from me. Lieutenant Kwan, I need a computer printout on the princess. It's important we learn all we can of her. Uh, we just found out she existed a few seconds ago. I really don't think you know how computers work. Also, wasn't there a city on fire earlier? And oh yeah! This is our protagonist, Rayma, and you can tell he's the hero because he rescues people from a burning building and then leaves them stranded there. What? He's a busy guy. He's got meetings to attend. The situation at this time is so serious that it's the worst in human history. Okay, I really think you guys are overreacting here. I mean, her name is Princess Dragon Mom. How much of a threat could she possibly be? But maybe the professor can tell us about what we're dealing with. I must admit, I know very little at this time. The princess is a creature of antiquity. Ten million years at least in age. And the monsters are mutants of creatures that roamed the Earth before the Ice Age. Okay, considering these things just appeared out of nowhere and only said they were gonna destroy shit, I'd say you know quite a bit about them. 
They are intelligent. They are smarter than the most up-to-date supercomputers. We cannot underestimate them. Yeah, but to be fair, a 1975 supercomputer probably couldn't even run Galaga, so that's not saying much. Whoa, the princess has a whip too? Damn, she's like a kaiju supervillain dominatrix. Somewhere a fanboy has a boner. I know I do. And how are these guys a threat to the Earth? They look like rejected Ultraman characters. Hell, this one even hatches from a jelly bean. That's not threatening. Well, unless it's black licorice flavored. Ugh. Hopefully these guys have a plan. It would be futile to fight them with military power. It would lead to defeat. Oh, really? Did your computers tell you that? You know you could at least try defeating them militarily. I'm pretty sure sanctions aren't gonna work. By the way, nice Grateful Dead logo in the background there. Since they've decided not to fight the monsters with military power, the professor's solution is to turn Rayma into a superhero, Inframan. Man, good thing he happened to have all the equipment needed to give somebody superpowers just lying around, or they'd really be screwed right now. A vast network of parts are inserted throughout the living cells, and then he would be powered by a miniature nuclear reactor. The trade-off is the radiation will make you sterile. You might also get leukemia. Seriously though, there does seem to be some serious side effects to becoming a superhero. You'll have to go through the sufferings of hell. Yes, and perhaps die. Sir, I'm prepared to die. To save mankind. Uh, if you're dead, then how can you become Inframan and save the Earth? You might want to give this some more thought. Too late, they've already started. The secret to Inframan's powers are regular injections of Kool-Aid. The sugar gives him hyper-fighting energy. Meanwhile, at Trump campaign headquarters... We've already met Princess Dragon Mom, so who are these other weirdos? She demon! Princess, I am your servant forever. Jeez, you'd think if you were gonna get an outrageous cone bra, you'd go a little bit bigger than an A cup. The princess sends Weed Man and Clayface here to wreak havoc on the outside world, which mostly consists of them destroying Herbie the Love Bug. Yeah, that was pretty good, but here's how you really cause a traffic accident. Yeah! Yeah, that's right, Hong Kong. You can try all you want, but when it comes to truly bizarre shit, you will never beat Japan. Plant Guy here goes to destroy the science team's satellite, and... Hey, wait a minute. Asian movie? Tentacles? I don't think I like where this is going. Oh, wait, never mind. He's just recreating the Poison Ivy parts from the Batman Arkham games. Quickly, men! A tug-of-war is our only hope for survival! I will give the movie this, they sure put their stuntmen through the ringer. At first I thought this shot was done with a dummy, but nope, that's a real guy. Well, guns don't seem to be working, does anyone have some weed killer? The professor still seems to be working on Inframan, who is apparently powered by AA batteries? Great, what's his backup power source, a hamster wheel? Oh well, at least these guys figured out hedge clippers are a better solution. So is Inframan ready yet? Success. The fuck was that? The fuck was that? The fuck was that? The fuck was that? Rayma, you are now Inframan. The bad news is that costume is now your skin. Hopefully your wife doesn't take this too hard. I see Inframan's great at both gymnastics and plumbing. What other powers does he have? Your senses are intensified, so you can even see and hear through walls. Great, now if only he could see through that helmet. Oh well, time to save the day. Nipple, nipple, tweak, tweak, whoa! How do people know who he is if he just got created? These tentacles may not be as naughty as some of the others I've seen on this show, but they still manage to include a money shot. Plus, the monster also has a really quick recovery time. Fortunately, Inframan knows that the quickest way to a monster's heart is by blowing it the fuck up. Also, the only way to beat a tree is by hitting it with another tree. You know, the fight choreography is actually pretty good, but they're just wasting time. Everyone knows this is just the build-up for when Inframan jumps in his robot. They said the monsters couldn't be defeated by military means, but I guess fireworks are their greatest weakness? Oh, and a laser, of course. Inframan managed to defeat the monster, but it looks like one of the science team's been captured. Why am I a prisoner? I expected to be killed. Yeah, what the hell, lady? I demand that you kill me right now. 
Turns out the reason they captured him is so they can brainwash him and use him to infiltrate science headquarters. Alright, I know I already made a this is your brain on drugs joke, but screw it, here's another one. This is your brain on evil. Oh, and by the way, eyes are down here, pal. Inframan may have defeated one monster, but he'll need some improvements to defeat all of them. There are other weapons I haven't given you as yet. For success, it's essential you have Thunderball fists. I can have such a thing. I can also give you Thunderfist balls. Looks like Brainwash guys returned after going through his goth phase. I wonder if he'll make the other guys suspicious. Sir, there's something wrong with his eyes. Hey, that is racist. Oh, <laughs> right, sorry. Brainwash guy knocks out a guard and steals his key and hey, 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 watch the hands, buddy. Oh, I see why Princess Dragon Mom hypnotized him. She's after the Inframan storyboards, the Fiend. What's weird is that it's not even Inframan who discovers and goes after him. It's this guy. Yeah, I'm sure they said his name at some point, but when you've got characters named Princess Dragon Mom, you tend to forget the normal ones pretty easily. I guess the movie's a Chinese version of Chips now. And this guy quickly learns that following bad guys only leads to more bad guys. This guy may not be a superhero, but don't let his goofy Mo Howard haircut fool you. He's actually pretty tough. Some reinforcements show up, and if a bunch of non-superpowered guys with no weapons are able to do this well against the monsters, why aren't they able to defeat them militarily again? Looks like it's time to transform into Inframan and... Oh, come on, guys. You forgot to put the background onto the blue screen. <laughs> Wait, how did he fly there when he was already there? Inframan may have his hands full, but he still remembers to give this guy a friendly pat on the head while he's kicking the crap out of people. Inframan easily takes care of Bug Boy here, so Dragon Mom decides to send in Devil Muppet to help out. Oh, dick move! Also, the stuntman is really close to those explosions there. I sure hope he got paid decently for this. How is Inframan gonna get out of this one? Huh, well that monster went down easy. He's still got Beetleface to deal with though. Plot convenience, make my monster grow! Well there's a switch, the bug's trying to squash him. And what the hell? You mean Inframan could grow bigger this whole time? Why didn't he do that at the beginning of the fight and just step on him? Oh well, at least they're fighting next to a giant bug zapper. Yeah, great job, Inframan. You killed the monster, but now the city doesn't have any power. Oh, wait, I guess he's not dead yet. Congratulations, you just did what you should have done in the first place. Meanwhile, the princess examines Inframan's blueprints for a weakness and finds out he's got an exhaust port that can cause a chain reaction if you fire proton torpedoes in it, or something. Ba -da -da, ba -da. What the hell? Did they interrupt the movie to have a picnic? Come on, let's go over there! Uh, okay, who the hell are you again? Apparently these are the professor's kids. Well, way to wait until more than halfway through to introduce the movie. Now I hardly have any time to not give a shit about him. Someday Daddy said he'll create an infra girl, and if he does, I'd like to get changed into infra girl. Oh, you could be, but you see, it takes a lot of strength and bravery. Those are both qualities you lack, sis. Best give up that dream now while you're young. The kids find a cave and stumble upon Mudbutt trying to blow up Science Headquarters' power supply, which means they're going to destroy the power station and this guy's sweet dating game shirt. Come on, let's watch the fireworks from outside. Aw, uh, but I wanted to stay here and get blown up too. You're no fun. Good thing Rayma's there to rescue them, although I don't think he needed to turn into Inframan to save them. Just pull the fuse out. <laughs> Okay, I'll admit that was more awesome than him just pulling the fuse out. Hmm, either they're working on Inframan's Thunderball fists, or they're busy inventing Pong. Those Thunderball fists will shoot a million volts. They are capable of destroying everything. At last, you're able to stop them. Now, I want you to try a test. You've got to know how strong your Thunderball fists are. You just said they can destroy everything. I think that means they're pretty strong. 
Well, at least now we know Inframan can bust balls at supersonic speed. That means he's almost as good as me. Oh, and this movie isn't just all monster action. It also takes time for a little character development. I am tired, but I'm unable to rest. It doesn't matter as long as the Earth is safe for you. For you and all the other children of the world. Children? Dad, I'm 26. Oh, I'm sorry, did I interrupt your moment? Let me tell you about the happiest and proudest moment of my life. Was it when I was born? <laughs> no. Instead of giving all these upgrades to Inframan, this place should really invest in some better security. Princess Dragon Mom demands that the professor come to her castle alone, but on the plus side, at least they give him a ride in their speedboat. Oh, watch your step, pal. Wouldn't want to damage the costume. The professor enters the Inframan action play set to meet with the princess, but first she has to deal with Su Ming. Well, that seemed unnecessary. His body is nothing more than ashes. Now do you understand? Yeah, I understand that fire burns people. Did you really need to kill one of your henchmen to prove that? The princess says she'll kill the professor's daughter if he doesn't cooperate. And, uh, hey, could you speed up your evil speech there, princess? I think the monster in the back has to pee. We also learn Inframan gets his power from the sun, so shit, I guess he really is Chinese Superman. Rayma goes to rescue the Professor as Inframan, and by that I mean he doesn't come as Inframan because I guess he forgot he's a superhero. Not that it really matters, since these mooks don't seem to be much of a threat. Oh, yeah. oh no, I'm surrounded! If only I could turn myself into a superhero! Good thing the rest of the science team's there to bail his ass out. Okay, guns seem to be really effective. Now just kung fu him to death. You know, for scientists, they're pretty good at fighting. They might get more science stuff done if they just spent less time sparring. Oh, and the monster's greatest weakness? Dirt bikes. You know, given the other stunts in this movie, it wouldn't surprise me if there was a guy in that costume there. After dealing with Dirtball, now it's time for a hipster mustache monster. Okay, seriously, turn into Inframan already, you idiot! And quit flying to places when you're already there! The princess sends out some clouds to block the sun and drain Inframan's power, even though it's clearly still light out. Uh, hang on a second, I'll fix it. There, that's better. Also, in addition to Thunderball fists, it looks like the professor also gave him... I don't know, golden eye feet? For a guy who loses his power when the sun is blocked, it seems like he still has a lot of power. Also, how does he use his powers indoors? Inframan gets captured by the princess, but don't ask me how, since the movie just shows him entering her lair, and instantly in the next scene he's captured. I don't know if my copy of the movie has a scene missing or something, but given how frantic the editing is in the rest of the movie, maybe they just didn't want to waste time with unnecessary things like making scenes flow together. I better shut up though, it looks like the princess is trying to send Inframan to the set of At The Earth's Core. Oh man, if only I could tweak my nipples and fly out of here! Of course he does eventually fly out of there, and I am not exaggerating when I say this leads to one explosive climax. Almost everything explodes in this scene, even the water explodes. He didn't even do anything to that guy other than throw him in and boom! It's like Princess Dragon Mom's headquarters is made out of nitroglycerin or something. I would love to know how many stuntmen were injured during the making of this movie, because there is no way somebody didn't get hurt shooting this scene. <laughs> Alright, it's just Inframan and She-Demon. Time to see whose animation budget is bigger. Keep the change, you filthy animal. Man, oh man, this scene just doesn't let up. Even when you think Inframan's defeated all the bad guys, more weirdos come in and keep fighting him. I am a little disappointed that Inframan has to resort to using nut shots, though. That's just fighting dirty. Take him prisoner! <laughs> Remember when you were a kid playing with your action figures and you wished there was a movie just like what you were doing with your toys? 
Well, turns out in the 70s, the Shaw brothers actually made it. Case in point, Inframan just starts pulling new powers out of his ass. The princess freezes him, and then this happens. Rayma, if you find yourself frozen by liquid ice, your missiles are designed to thaw you out. Now, some of you may be thinking, weird, I don't remember that scene where the professor tells Inframan that. Well, that's because he didn't. The movie is flashing back to a scene that didn't happen. No surprise Inframan defeats these bozos. Action figures with springs in them always break so easily. And don't you just hate it when the final boss makes you fight a bunch of regular enemies too? That's so cheap. Okay, Inframan, you've killed the other monsters, and probably some of the actors. Now you just need to defeat Princess Dragon Mom. Okay, the head slicing isn't working. Try something else. Oh, hey, it looks like that laser he always uses to kill the bad guys is what killed her. Go figure. Professor, hurry. Let's get out of here. It's the last day of shooting and they're demolishing the set. Also, screw epilogues. Everything blew up and that means the movie's over. Hey, it worked for Mighty Peking, man, didn't it? So that's Inframan. It's silly, it's cheesy, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And it's pretty awesome. This is one of the most frenetic and ridiculous movies I've done on this show, but that's exactly part of its charm. This really does seem like the ultimate movie a little boy would think of, right down to a lot of Inframan's powers and parts of the plot seemingly getting made up on the spot. The movie almost never pauses for a breath, keeping the action coming as fast as possible, the fight scenes are actually pretty well staged and entertaining, and the characters, even though they're goofy as hell, are actually pretty memorable for just how weird they are. Seriously, who names the main villain Princess Dragon Mom? If you're a fan of things like Godzilla, Kung Fu flicks, or even colorful old school superhero stuff like the Adam West Batman, this movie should be right up your alley. You may not always understand what's going on, but unless you hate explosions, you won't be bored. Well, that's all for now. Until next time.